we've been using the Burling Steam Regulator for quite a few years. And with the Burling Steam Regulator, we use a proportion air, typically our QB series, a single loop controller, because the Burling is as uh, very accurate in and of itself without having to worry about uh, the QB2 like we would normally do with most pneumatic regulators. And uh, we use the QB1 as the pilot for that Burling regulator. That's really a marriage made in heaven. You give us a command signal that equates to the pressure, us being the proportion error QB1, the pressure that you want on the dome of that steam regulator, and it goes to that pressure and maintains pressure on top of the diaphragm. Because of the sense tube that's in all types of regulators that's sensing pressure downstream and that pressure then is transmitted to the bottom of the diaphragm, then the regulator is just seeking equilibrium all the time, making sure that pressure on the dome matches pressure underneath of the diaphragm. Well, we had talked about steam a little bit when uh, I first came here. David Reed was my engineering mentor and he mentioned temperature control with steam. Went in one ear and out the other because I didn't get, get involved in steam applications very often. Then I visited a customer who had a steam application. That application was to cure some rubber components that were used in a military aircraft. It was during the time when the government was needing those parts as quick as possible and they were struggling to be able to keep up with the demand for the parts. And uh, the product that I went in there with was not our steam regulator. And I realized pretty quickly that what I had to offer wasn't going to meet his need. And then in passing, I mentioned that we had a line of steam regulators. And he stopped me and asked me to tell him a little bit more about steam regulators. So I told him, of course, that they work the same as a pneumatic regulator. They're air piloted, except it's steam underneath the diaphragm instead of air. And he wanted to know if we could control the pressure of that saturated steam as accurately as we did compressed air for our pneumatic systems. And I told him, of course. And that's when he asked me the question if I knew that the pressure of saturated steam was directly related to temperature. And I didn't. But the light came on, and I realized that we had a product that would work really well. And that was my Thermodynamics 101. I'm not an engineer. I'd never gone through Thermodynamics. I captured all the information for his application, and I brought it back to Proportion Air. And David and I sat down and put together a part number for his application. He said it sounded too good to be true. We offered it on trial, and the rest is history because it worked extremely well. When I went back after that uh, trial unit had been installed about two weeks, that's when I got my uh, Thermodynamics 102, where he explained uh, how much better, how much quicker he was able to get his mold to temperature and how much faster he was actually able to make the parts. And from there then, that was my education on saturated steam for rubber curing. Now, when you compare how temperature control is typically done with saturated steam, most people will buy a valve. Fact of the matter is, looking at a, an engineering textbook for controls, uh, one of our uh, application engineers is going through uh, engineering courses at university right now. We had a look at the book and the way they described to control temperature using the pressure saturated steam was to buy a valve. Valves are made to throttle flow or to turn on and off, but they're not made to control pressure. And you buy a thermocouple, an RTD, whatever you want to call it, to sense temperature downstream. You bring that signal back to a temperature controller, a PID loop, if you will. And that PID loop then is giving a command signal to an I2P to tell that valve how far open and how far closed it needs to be to maintain temperature. The thing with that process is that that valve has to work all the time. If you look in a valve that's being used to control saturated steam pressure, you'll notice that the valve is always working. And that valve working equates to wear 
and it also means that it's struggling to maintain the actual temperature that you're looking for. On the other hand, using a steam regulator to control pressure, you give it a command signal of pressure, you put pressure on top of the diaphragm that equates to the pressure that you want under the diaphragm, look up your steam table and look at what the temperature is for a specific pressure and you'll notice that those two are directly related. If you can control pressure on top of that diaphragm precisely, you're going to control pressure under the diaphragm automatically. The regulator was made to regulate pressure. You don't have to worry about a PID controller having to be set up and tuned and programmed. Give it a command signal that equates to the pressure you want. Our electronic pressure regulator, which is typically how we control pressure on our saturated steam regulators. It maintains that pressure on the diaphragm. The regulator maintains the pressure underneath of the diaphragm and you control temperature automatically, very precisely, without having to worry about the inaccuracy that you see with the valve. One of the biggies that I'm familiar with is tire curing. So a green tire has been manufactured and now they actually have to uh, mold the tread design into that green tire and they have curing presses. Those curing presses are all heated with saturated steam and temperature control is important there to get the correct product. And that's an application we've been very successful for. You would also find that same application in places where they make rubber hoses for automobiles or belts for farm equipment, uh, for example, the, the large belts to bring grain into a harvester, for example. Those are all cured with saturated steam. You might also find them in, well, you will find saturated steam in a food processing plant where they're uh, controlling temperature to cook something. Uh, one of the applications we got involved with was cooking corn for uh, the manufacture of tortillas. It's also used in sterilization applications, and most everybody who uses saturated steam to control temperature wants to make sure that it's precise. The nice thing about the Burling steam regulators is the size range that we have. We have from half inch up to six inch flange mount. So the question we ask is, what range of pressure do you want to control? What kind of flow is required for the application? And from there, we select the parts that match your requirement. Of course, we're going to ask questions about temperature and those types of things to make sure that the soft goods match your required application.